We're gonna continue on with our simple GUI framework. This time we're gonna make it so we can have a much better layout than the icky ugh, flow layout that you can see right here. So flow layout, all it does is it simply just puts things in and every time you add a new thing to your panel, it just puts it into the right until the window is out of space. And then as you can see right here, it simply just wraps it around to the next line. Nothing works like this. I don't know why this is the default layout. I don't want to read the API enough to even investigate this because it's so icky. Ugh, I hate it. Instead, I like using the spring layout. The spring layout API allows you to control the springs or space between things and allows you to do a nice little way of organizing your code. Excuse me. Allows you to wait, um, a nice little way of um, laying out your interface in a way that is very pleasing. You can structure it so it's based on all the pieces you want. So say, for example, you have a central component you want to organize things around. You can easily do that by using springs attached to the, um, those things. So, oh, I can have the framework right here. So I have all these pieces that go in a nice little line right here. And then the stuff over here to the left of that or below that. or It makes it so it looks really easy to organize and it's very doable. So that's the default layout I like to use when I'm working with my students and also making my own projects. So let's go ahead and let's take our project right here using the two buttons. But we'll make it so we can have the um, spring and make it so it's a lot easier and um, it's a lot prettier and we can do some cool stuff with it. So let's go ahead and make that happen. And the first thing we're going to do is, of course, we're starting off in our panel class. We're going to go back up to our panel and in our panel we're going to add a new import. It's in the swing library as well. So we're going to go to import and we're going to java x dot swing dot spring layout. So we have to get an import for it so we can use it. I'm going to go up here in my data member section and I make a private um, spring layout. I'm going to give it the really creative name of layout. I know, I give the best names. And then just like before, I initialize all my data members. So I initialize my spring layout right here. So this dot layout. And it doesn't take any parameters. So I simply just call the initializer or the constructor with that. Inside my setup panel, once I set my background, I want to tell my layout, um, panel that the layout manager is this spring layout. So I just simply do this dot layout, this dot set layout. And I pass it my layout variable. So it's, oh, I've now initialized it as that. And so when I first set this up, when I hit play, this is what it does to the layout because I, I'm using the spring layout. It just dumps all my stuff into one pile in the top left corner. Now, if I didn't know that, I'd be like, ah, oh, where'd my stuff go or what's going on? But I already know that because it's like, oh, I have to do this. So what this means is I have to actually specify where I want my pieces to go. And so I do that, I'm gonna go over and actually put the layout manager and use that. I'm gonna use the window builder tool. And I'm also gonna show you, you can just build your own um, layouts by using um, the constraints and how to put that together. So we'll go ahead and we'll quit this because we never wanna see that again, because that's icky. And we're gonna go up here and inside my lovely um, file, I'm gonna click on the package navigator. I'm gonna right click on set uh, demo panel. I'm gonna go down here to open with, and I'm gonna use my window builder editor. The window builder editor is uh, built into Eclipse. You just have to download the plugin for it. And I click on the design tab. Wait a couple seconds. I know, time happens. And as you can see, I've got my two buttons right here. I look at my hierarchy um, over here on the left. I have a demo button that I can select, and I have my other button. Over here on the property section, I have a constraint section. This is where all the uh, constraints or the springs are set. And if you click on the plus sign by the constraints, you'll see I have west, east, north, and south springs that I have to make sure I handle. And I can also just do this simply by going over here, and I click on the button, and I move it where I want it to be. And I click on this button, I move it where I want it to be. And unless I um, make sure I specify how big my screen is going to be, this doesn't actually reflect my screen exactly. So I'm going to go make a couple changes really fast. I'm going to undo this really quick. So Command Z and Command Z again before I do any changes. I'm going to go back to my Source tab. As you can see, it has um, right here. I'm going to go inside my Imports. I'm going to add a new import right here in my AWT section. Import java.awt.event. Sorry, dot dimension. That's going to be so I can specify the size of what I'm working with because I need to use the set preferred size, which takes a dimension as a parameter instead of my usual uh, method of doing simply 800 by 600 I've been doing already. So I go over here to set up panels and after I set my color, but before I set my layout manager, I'm going to do this dot set preferred size. And it passes a new dimension. And I use the same dimension size I'm working with inside my thing, so 800 comma 600 just as I did with my frame, that's the size of the window I'm working with, so I know what I'm looking at. And now when I go to my design window, it resizes it so it's, oh, here's what's happening. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get rid of this window because we don't need that right there. And so, oh, that actually matches the size of the window I'm working with, so it's a lot easier to plan where things are gonna happen. So now when I click my other button or my demo button, I have my constraints, I can click on it, I can drag it where I want it to be, and it's gonna reflect on the actual thing. And so I've got this right here. So I've got this is going to be in the bottom right corner. This one's going to be in the bottom left corner-ish. There we go. 
And so I've got it right there. You can see it's right there in the corners. Now when I hit save and I hit run on my code, open up my app right here, and ka -chow! It looks almost like what I have right there. So I have click here and other clicks. And so I'm like, oh, that works. Great. That's wonderful. So I have what I'm looking for right here. Now, the only bad thing about this is, is when I go over back to my source tab and I look at my actual code, it threw in a whole bunch of ugly code right here in my constructor. Ugh. I don't want ugly code in my constructor. And so what I need to do is this um, constraint code and only the constraint code, um, Window Builder just throws it the first place it'll compile. By default, it's going to be the constructor, but it could happen theoretically somewhere else. And so you just want to make sure you grab that code. I'm going to use Command X to cut. I'm going to place all that icky code and put it inside my setup layout method where, oh, that handles my layout. And as we put it there, let's take a look at what's actually happening with the code on that. So I'm saying layout. And I want to put a constraint. And I want to put a constraint against the north edge of demo button. I want my north edge of my demo button to be zero away from the north edge of my other button. Oh, so their tops are going to line up. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to put another constraint that the west edge of demo button, it's going to be 26 away from the west edge of this, which happens to be the panel. Oh, okay. So it's 26 in from the west side or the left side of the app. And the constraint on the south side of other button, it's negative 44. So on east and south, the negative 44 is going to go up from or in from on the west and south sides. On the north and the um, west side, a positive number goes in, a negative number will go out. Yeah, I know. I didn't control this, but hey, it's okay. And so it's negative 44. I don't want negative 44. I'm going to change that right here to negative 50. So it's a nice, lovely, solid number. And make this also negative 50. And we'll make this one right here a positive 50. So I just change those uh, values right here manually inside that. I click in the Design tab, and it'll automatically reparse it. Those, oh, that's 50 and 50 away. So it's, oh, okay, cool. And if I click on that, you can see that right here, there's that lovely spring of 50 and 50 right there. And this one is attached to be zero. So it is the same height of that. And that's 50 over there. So I can link those up. Now I can do even more cool things with that. So I can make it so I can make these things even bigger. So if I say, for example, I want this thing to be 50 away from this, but still have that. So if I take that lovely right here, I'm going to go back to my code. And I'm going to click on that. I want it to be 50 away from the north edge. So I'm going to say that this one right here, that the north edge of my other button so I do layout dot put constraint. And the order really doesn't matter. And I do spring layout dot north, the constant. And I'm going to do other button, the parameter I'm working with. And I want to say that it's 50 away from the spring layout dot north of this. And so I'm going to say the other button is going to be 50 away from the north edge of the panel. And I click on my design tab. And boom, look at that. My other button is huge. This is amazing. Let's run it. Let's see how it looks. So I hit play. Nose edge. I want to save my panel. Oh, yes, I do. And now I've got an amazing huge other click. And look at that. My other click button is just giant and tall. It's amazing. And so you can do some really cool layout with that. And so all we have to do to make that happen, again, let's go ahead and take a look at that in the source tab. We have the spring layout is the layout manager we do for that. We initialize it as a data member, initialize it in our constructor, excuse me. And then inside our setup panel, I set it as the layout manager by calling this.setLayout. And inside setup layout, I can either manually type this in or I can use the window builder tool to actually um, drag it around and manipulate those pieces with that. But if you don't have window builder or permissions to install window builder, you can simply just type your own constraints right here. And so the constraint structure goes the layout manager, in this case layout, I know I give boring names, dot put constraint, and then what direction you want to assign it to. So the spring layout's north side of which thing? The button. How far do you want it to be? I want it to be zero away from what? I want it to be zero away from the north edge of the other button. Oh, so I can specify all those parameters right there and I can build it up and I can do some really cool stuff. And so this one right here, I'm going to say my, I want my south edge of my demo button to be the same as my other button as well. So they all, they're both huge giant buttons. So I just do layout dot put constraint and I'll do spring layout dot south. And again, it's a constant and it's a cap. So right there, and then I do demo button and I want it to be zero away from the spring layout dot south edge of what? Of other button. So I want demo button to be 
directly aligned with other buttons north and south edges and then it's 50 away from that so I hit save and I hit play and watch what happens I have two amazing huge buttons that I can click on and they automatically resize to fit the text with that because it's so cool and nifty because I didn't do anything to specify where the um, in this case the edge of this side is or the edge of this side is. I only specified where that edge is. Both, they're both 50 away. So it's really pretty cool. It expands out, makes it look really pretty. And so that's how we can do some really cool stuff with a GUI. And so we've learned how to do all sorts of cool stuff. Check out my other videos on how to actually make the listeners for the buttons, how to put the frame together, how to install the panel, and how to do the basic framework to actually make this all work. Hope this is helpful. Cheers. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.